Hello, good evening. How are you today? Hi, hi. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, teacher. Nice. Nice, nice. Vamos a ver. Okay, Adriana Sofía. Here, Adriana Sofía. Ana Alicia. Ana. Ana Gisel. David Alexander. Present teacher. ¿Cómo vamos? ¿Si ¿Sí logró llegar? Ahorita voy entrando, pero salí a las cuatro de la tarde. Wow. Hoy fue igual que ayer. Feo el día. Horrible el tráfico. Sí. Casi cuatro horas de tráfico, tres horas. Cuatro horas de tráfico, David. Desde las cuatro de la tarde. Wow. Triste. Sí, terrible. Lots of gas. And the time. Right? Le gasta bastante. Sí, bastante, bastante cansado. Bastante cansado. Si fuera otro manejando, por lo menos pudiera dormir, pero manejando. Exactamente. Uh -huh, ni lo... carpool podemos hacer. Pues sí, exacto. Bueno, pero qué bueno que ya llegó. Gracias, Ticho. Diego Batres. Edwin Mauricio. Present, teacher. Estaré de nuevo de oyente. Eso estaba viendo, Edwin. Hilda Cristina. Elda. Present teacher. Elmer Fabricio. Elmer. Elmer, no here, Elmer. Grace Michelle. Ivo Marcela. Jennifer Elizabeth. Jessica Lisset. Jose. José Alberto, Karen Janet, presente, Carla Lorena, presente, chef, Lice Dayanara, Lice Dayanara, Nubia, presente, chef. Rebeca Marcela. Rebeca también. ¿Quién tiene micrófono abierto? No, 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 no,
Adriana, Sofía, microphone. Thank you. Present no me dijo y tiene el micrófono abierto todo. Vamos a ver. Ay, no. Nubia también. Qué tristeza, Nubia. Vamos a ver. Pero solo un ratito, teacher. Solo necesito mandar una cotización. Ay, padre. Sí, ya, ya me... me da tristeza cuando los que usualmente están eh, y que participan en clases se me van también. Porque entonces, no, pero... entonces no me queda nada. Vamos ah, yo sé, teacher, pero ya rápido voy a tratar de hacer esto para incorporarme. Ok, thank you, thank you. Vaya, yo solo les comento que para mí es bien triste dar una clase así que este por ejemplo ahorita ya llevo seis seis oyentes entonces pero como ahí se agregan los demás que, que están pero que no dicen estoy de oyente pero que tampoco están entonces bueno eh, 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 Hoy vamos a ver cómo nos va, ¿ok? Porque habemos 13, de los 13, 6 están 80. Rosy. Bueno, por lo menos Rosy y David sí están por ahí. Carlita está. <ríe> vamos a tener tres en clase. Sí, ¿verdad? Carlita sí está. Sí, con... aquí está. Sí. Excelente. Teacher, a mí no me va a mencionar en la asistencia. No he terminado porque me asusté, Víctor. Ah, ok. Me quedé viendo todos los que están solo oyendo hoy. Vaya, ya sigo, no he terminado. Me he quedado cabal con Rosa Hilda. Vaya, Rosy. Present, teacher. No me vaya a decir oyente. No, teacher, medio participo, pero ahí voy. <ríe> Víctor Manuel. Present, teacher. ¿Está conmigo también? Sí. Excelente. Karen Stephanie. Karen Karen. Adriana Marcela. No está Adriana. José Alfredo. Ay, teacher. Disculpen, pero solo la primera hora estaré de bien. Oh. Ya ve. Okay. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Hello, Ana. How are you? Fine, teacher, thank you. No, no se dice fine, sino not bad. Not bad. ¿Cómo así? O oh, ve, o oh, ¿cómo, oh, ¿cómo es así? Es que fíjese que vi un artículo que decía que uno no tiene que contestar fine, sino fine. que, o oh, sí. When you say not bad, es porque está sin medio. ¿Eh? Que por poco no le va mal. <risa> ah, pues no, va, entonces omitamos ese, pero, fine. pero ahí okay. decía otras opciones. <risa> Yeah, because when you tell me, hey, how are you? Not bad. Esto es como que no mal, pero tampoco bien. Right? Ok, ok. Not bad, not bad. No todo mal, pero tampoco estoy bien. Ajá. No, you're fine. You're excellent. You're fantastic. You're great. Elda, Cristina, la veo por allí. Yes, teacher. Nice. Ah, sí, ya le había puesto present. ¿Quién acaba de conectarse que no estaba antes, aparte de Ana? ¿Quién me falta? ¿A todos le había puesto present ya? Sí. Me, teacher, present. Grace, buen provecho, Grace. Thank you, teacher. <ríe> Llegando, Grace. Yes, teacher. Excelente. Vamos a ver, yo creo que hoy sí, ¿verdad? Adriana Sofía, hello. Adriana Sofía. 
No está, ¿verdad? Todavía. Uh -huh. Vaya. Ok. Bueno. Let's begin. Let's begin. We are 15 now. Nice. Vaya. Grace sí va a estar conmigo, sí, ¿verdad? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, teacher. Excelente. Teacher. Bye. Eh, hola. Teacher. Sí, Buenas tardes, oyente. Está lloviendo fuerte acá y no estoy saliendo. Elmer Fabricio, ¿dónde está Elmer, Elmer Fabricio? Aquí no hay, pero señas de lluvia. Y San, San Miguel is raining. San Miguel. San Miguel is raining. It's going to rain soon here too. Pero espero que no nos llueva a todos al mismo tiempo porque entonces no me va a oír nada. Como ayer, que me tocó ponerme así el micrófono. Pues, ¿no? Nada. <risa> así estamos ahorita, Tiche. Puede estar de oyente, si me... Va, si se okay. come el agua, yo lo... Okay. ok. Vamos a ver, dice Dayanara present. I vi, vi por allí a Jessica. Yes, teacher, present. Ok. Va, chupos. ¿Quién más? Tiche, una consulta más. Con la asistencia me marcó. Eh, Elmer. Elmer Fabricio. Sí, sí ahorita. <ríe> Vaya, Jennifer, Elizabeth, no, vamos a ver los que no estaban. Adriana, Sofía. Adriana. Vamos a hacer señas, tal vez. Hola. Ahí la vi que andaba. Sí, yo estoy oyente porque voy a ir camino a mi casa. Oh, vaya. Va, pues sí, ya la oí. Ana Grisel. No yet. Ana Grisel. No, ¿verdad? No. 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 Ok. Eh, Diego. Ivonne, Marcela, Jennifer, Alicetti por allí. Correcto. Ah, pero Liseta y Anara. Ah, Jessica Liseta también. Ok. Eh, José Alberto, no. Karen Stephanie, no yet. Adriana Marcela. Present teacher. Ahí estaba. Vaya. Vale, ok, ya faltan menos. Ahí está, muy bien. Let's see. I told you. Today we are going to be talking about indirect questions. Indirect questions. And of course, I'm going to share here. And of course, uh, we continue talking. We continue talking about the, the new, the new topic, right? That we're talking about product line. I'm sharing the screen now, talking about product line. So today you're going to be talking about building a new product. Oh, well, oh, yeah, producing a new product, a shampoo, yes. And you will be designing your own shampoo. But the main topic that you will see in the name is indirect questions. But just no questions. Tomorrow, we continue talking about indirect questions, but it will be a double H questions or information questions, right? And you will see how they are very different. And you have to be very careful that you do not mix the two forms. Because one is a just no and the other is information question. Okay, well, before we start, we're going to discuss these three questions. One, does your company manufacture products? Are production processes updated frequently? Is there a quality control department at your company? Yes. Okay, you're going to discuss these questions. Let me tell you the number of the page in the manual. This is 
page 27. Yeah, page 27. Ready? Yes, right? right. I'm going to send you to the groups. You're going to discuss the questions in groups. Out. And then you share with me. Let's make we can make three, four groups. Uh -huh. Okay. Sí, José Alfredo lo apunté dos veces. Ok, vámonos pues. Join your rooms. Join your rooms and discuss the questions. Jessica, you said, oh. Victor, check if you can join. Ay, Hola. Espera que nos, nos ayuda para poder compartir. Sí, ahorita, David, ya, listo. Gracias, Ticha. Ok. ¿Es de responder a esas preguntas o el diálogo, teacher? No, de conversar, de questions first. De, ok, the questions first. Yeah. De, yes, de eso. Yes. Ok. Listo, Ana. No sé si puede ver. Sí, okay. Porque Diosito ya sabe que sí, sí, la casa sí, sí, sí. va para. Este, the question said: Does your company manufacture products? No. My, the place where I work? No. You, David? Eh, no. I know it's the production, the manufacturer. Uh -huh. Are production process processes updated frequently? Um, yes, the actualization, the and the update, the process 
and the distribution. Mm -hmm. is, is, and is there a quality control department at your company? Yes, I have. And we have the department of the quality control. Um, because the the charts in the charts the product. In my work, we don't have well. Yes, we have, but at the end of the semester or at the end of the course, we have an evaluation, and there is the way that they that they have the quality control, but or yes. We don't we don't have a see a frequently um, quality control well or maybe if parents if they if they have complain complain queja verdad complaints complaints maybe that could be a quality control. But not, but not like a process. Okay, in my company department, no really. Um, just the quality control by the my um, supervisor and the coordinator. Mm -hmm. And they are the verify the the quality control. But the quality control in your workplace, it refers about what? Because you, you ah yes, because you send product to another uh, countries. So you yeah. have to, you have to, uh, well, the company have to know if the products are sent. Mm -hmm. The quality control in my company is the the around the equipment is the product is a uh, uh, excellent condition and the uh, album and process of album is the charge he has the verify the product is la mayoría Rebeca, no se ponga oyente, porque usted no es oyente, solo hoy. Sí, pues ya vemos más. Sí, sí, solo hoy. Sí, pero... Me cambio el nombre. Sí, le lo voy a quitar yo ahorita. Sí, porque oyentes son, es otra cosa. La gente que está así ah. no recibe el diploma. Oh, no sabía. Ah. Okay. Entonces ahí es otro rollo. Ah, es otro. Ah, ok. okay. Ajá, no entonces sabía. ustedes solo a mí me dicen que están de oyente, yo los apunto para mandarlos a otros grupos. Pero no, no se ponen allí. Porque, <coughs> ¿verdad? Yo ya los apunté. Ah, ok, teacher. Gracias. Gracias por la aclaración. Teacher, we are talking. Eh... In our companies, there are no manufacturing products. In, in, for example, in my company, there are construction of civil project, but it's no manufacturing product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are, for, but there are uh, one area of quality control for okay. super. For the super super vision, super vision, como es supervisión? Supervising, supervising of the constructive process. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I don't know the the product is the way or the bike or. Mm -hmm. Is, but it's no manufacturing. But it's no manufacturing, it's construction. Uh -huh, exactly. Construction. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Rosie? 
In my company, teacher only receive product. ¿Cómo se dice producto? Ya es producto terminado. Ajá, ajá. Finish product. Finish product. In this case, is the quality control department of your company? In my company, uh, department quality control? No. ¿Cómo es? There, there are. But. You don't have a quality control department? No, only auditors. Okay. Department. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, because you don't manufacture, right? Mm -hmm. But, pues, me lo llevo. Okay, teacher. So, uh, Okay, Bash. Let's see everybody here. Who wants to share? Does your company manufacture products? Somebody? No, teacher. No. My company doesn't manufacture product. It's services, right? Yes, it is. Okay, what about the others? Does your company manufacture products? In my company, they do not manufacture products, teacher. Mm -hmm. No, because you only uh, move product that is finished, you told me, right? Yes. What about the others? Anybody manufactures products in the company? Well, if we don't have manufactured product, we don't have production process either, right? Let's see, what about quality control department? Is there a quality control department at your company? No, teacher, we don't have a quality control department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, quality control department. Victor, is there a quality control department in your company? Uh, yeah, uh, is there, uh, there is a quality control department, but um, we don't produce. Uh, like company, the company don't produce any product, but uh, distribute distributes company this so yes so uh, has a quality control to check to check uh, or to evaluate the the service mm -hmm. okay in my case teacher and um, my life job they do have a quality control department because uh, because a uh, uh, company of manufacturing and conversion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In that case, definitely the quality control department is very necessary, right? Okay, yes. perfect. Let's move to the conversation now. But before the conversation, check this vocabulary, right? This vocabulary is describing the process of production. What is the production process? And what are the steps that we follow when we make, when we produce or elaborate a shampoo, yeah? That's the conversation we're going to be reading about, about making, how to make a chocolate. Okay, check the words. You have mix, 
quality control, filter, caping, labeling, packing. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to go look at the words, match them with the correct definition, and then we will check. I'm going to make different rooms again. Vamos a ver. Yo creo, sí, ya somos más. I'm going to make one more group now. Vamos a ver. Let's see, let's Ya, see. teacher. Eso, me llega. Vamos a ver. Mm -hmm. Bye, I guess, sí, que ahí vamos. Let's go. Match the vocabulary with the correct definition, please. Grace, try to join. Yes. ¿Verdad que no estoy compartiendo? Aquí, sí. la labeling, no. Pero me quedo, se me ha perdido la página y ya está bien. Ella. Aquí. Aquí está, aquí está. Vamos a ver si la teacher nos deja compartir. Ya, ya, ya le di permiso. <ríe> ok. Ok. Number one, mix. <coughs> I think all the raw materials are provided in a bunch, batch and mixer. Provided. Así se pronuncia, teacher. Provided. Poured, a poured, poured, poured es esto. Cuando usted tiene un líquido, lo echa. Mm. Sí, that's poured. Okay. What do you think, Carlito? Mm. Lo estoy leyendo bien. Okay. Uh, all the raw materials are for in a batch and mix. And mix it. <coughs> sí, creo que sí. Series are poured in pack and mix it. Number two, quality control. Aquí ya está lloviendo. Really? 
Yes, teacher, pero calmadito, no se ven rayos ni nada. Sonsonate. Sonsonate. It will rain here then. Mm -hmm. <coughs> A sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets a specification. I think for analysis, no, I don't know, quality control. Recuerda que una vez yes, yes. Que, que habían palabras que más o menos se relacionaba al concepto. Ajá, mm. sí. Quality control, I think is 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 this a sample is sent to be analyzed, analyzed to ensure it analyzed to ensure it meets specification. Is number two. Mm. ¿Cómo cómo cómo? Me perdí. Sí, la que se dijo. A sample is sent to be analyzed. Quality control, ¿verdad? Ajá. Uh -huh. Okay. Number three, filter. Filter. Eso es una pregunta. <laughs> Oh. Empty es como vacío, vacío. Batch dijo, pero no me acuerdo. Quiero ver. Uh -huh. After the batch is approved. The shampoo is, otra vez esta palabra, pure in the right amount into the empty bottle. Que pure es como ad, pero cuando es, es líquido. Es como trasegar. No, agregar. Ah, agregar. No. La tres creo que es este... After the batch is approved, the shampoo is poured in the right amount into empty bottles. Mm -hmm. Number three. Okay, I think. Cupping. Mm. What's the mean cupping? <laughs> Por ahí hay una palabra que le da la, la clave. Dicho hmm. <coughs> que me hace trampa, sí. <risa> es que yo a veces le estaba diciendo a Carlita que de las preguntas que vimos ahora, yo este, la resolví hace dos días para practicar, ¿verdad? Y tener listo, más o menos. <risa> y, y no la vimos ni antier ni ayer, sino que hasta ahora. <risa> Lindo, <risa> la cosa es que las lecciones, como yo voy siguiendo el orden que me dan. Ah, ya. Ajá. Y yo el del, el, de, el, de, el del manual. Ajá, no. Y, y ellos no siguen el manual del, del siempre. Oh. No que otro. Ya. Es, este, ese es... The borders are moved to another machine that puts a cap on every bottle and twists them tight. Puts a cap is the word that is it? It's huh? capping. 
La palabra que usted nos dijo, la palabra clave, put a cap. Exacto, exacto. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Happiness is the bottles are moved to another machine. <coughs> Four. Okay, number five, lovely. The bottles are put in layer. Then says the bottles of machine where the labels with ingredients and the brand name is too mm -hmm. complain. Mm -hmm. This is lovely. Yes. This bird. See? Number six, packing. This. Ese era, ese era el, el filter. I think that could be filtered. Pero I think that is, is like fill it. Como no. as, as our company say, como llenado. But, but is not an, one option with filling? No. Pero me voy a poner aquí filter. filter is not filling, it's different. Uh -huh. Yes. It's not, it's not the same, Anna. Yes, that's why we say and that maybe it is, it is not the, the answer that we were right. No, filter is filtrando. Espérame, que aquí ya me perdí en qué pantalla estoy. Bye. Pues sí, ah, pues yo creo que ahí nos hemos equivocado en alguna. We made a mistake in some of the... I Definitions. think it's the only one that's yeah, good, that's, that that's let... I'm going to check what happened here. It's the only one that let free. See? No, you're okay. You're correct. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shampoo is pure in the right amount. Aha. Thank you, antivirus. Well, number four, capping. Capping uh -huh. is the bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cap on every bottle and twists them right. Twist them right. Que la gira, vea. Mm -hmm. Que pone la tapadera en cada botella girándola rápidamente, vea. Vaya, labeling. Number five, the conveyor belt. Take the the belt. No rápidamente, sino que apretado. Porque no yeah. dice fast, no dice tight. What capping like, means? That is the tapando, como tapando, la, como el momento que van tapando las botellas. Exactly. Have you seen in the product in the when they go in the conveyor belt, you see all the bottles and something like part of the machine, right? It's put in the, yes, yes. the cap and another is to, uh -huh. to tie yes. them. Mm -hmm. That's well, the I only I only see them in 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 YouTube, not in the reality, but uh -huh. I I uh -huh, yeah, because it's not the type of work that we do. But if you uh -huh. have Coca-Cola or in any place, yes, yes. use or something like that, that would be like a normal thing for us. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Number five, labeling. Labeling means the conveyor will take the bottles to the machine where the labels with ingredients oh. are and the brand name, bye-bye. Okay. Oh. 
Ok, ok. Tienes falta. Vamos a ver. Oh, everybody here. Vamos a ver. Checking. Eh, after the batch is approved, the shampoo is poured in the, in the right amount into the empty bottles. What is it? Filter. Filter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number, well, the next one, the conveyor belt takes the bottles, the machine. Number five, library. Mm -hmm. Yes. The bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cap of every bottle and keeps them tight. Peter, excuse me, there is some not a. Uh, ya, ya lo apague uh, este, in the background. Ana, ya lo, ya lo bajé porque. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yo creo que a él me se había olvidado, dejó abierto el micrófono y cómo está trabajando. Bye. No, quería participar, pero creo que se escucha ah, mal. Okay. No, lo, no lo oía hablar, solo se oía así como que había bastante viento. Sí, hay mucho viento, me imagino, ahorita, ¿verdad? Ahorita sí. Y así se oye. Vaya, vamos a ver. The bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cap on every bottle. What do you Capping. have? Capi. Capi. Or capi. Capi. All the raw materials are poured in a batch and mixed. Mix. Number one, mix. Uh -huh. Exactly, mix. The bottles are put into boxes and are ready to be sent to the stores. Packing. Number six, packing. Number six, packing. Very good. Uh, sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets specification. Quality control. Quality control. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, we agreed with a group that the definition of filter is kind of strange. Right? Because this is not filter, this is feeling. You're feeling the, 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 you're feeling the shampoo. Because filter is when you eliminate all the, the things that are not poor, right? Uh, before it's like cleaning something, right? But that's the word here, and that's the word that probably you will find in the exam. So, ni modo, we will leave it like that. Okay, vamos a ver what time is it? Oh, we still have time. Let's go to the conversation, check the conversation. And remember, we're talking about uh, the product of making a shampoo, right? What's the production process? of a new shampoo. Let's read the conversation. I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. 
I have, thank you. I have, thank you, Lucia. Perfect. I'd like us to revise the steps to verify that we are ready to start producing our new shampoo, right? I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Yeah, that's a good point, Craig. Marta, would you, mind, would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? Of course. Let me revise my files. Greg, could you find out if the production manager is around? I need him to clarify what the revision step is about. Okay, we have here a couple of questions. If you see, I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. This is what we call indirect questions. Instead of saying, hey, Lucia, did you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process? That'd be a direct question, right? We're using an indirect question. I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. The other one, I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. In this, in this, if you were using a direct question, you will say, should the quality control step be repeated once the product is finished? Right? That'd be direct. But remember, as we want to be very polite, because that's the purpose of using an indirect question, of being very, very polite. And then we have, would you mind telling us if the cost to rent a second quality control will go very high? Would you mind telling us if, if you say if, if means C, right? And that's what we will use in the questions, in the indirect questions. Well, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to go chair and answer the questions, discuss, right, practice. We will need one, two, three, groups of three now. So you go practice the conversation and answer the questions. Then we will enter more in detail with the questions there. I'm also there. Hmm. Okay, question. Groups of three. Okay. <laughs> la, 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 la. Vamos a ver qué tengo. Bueno, si algún grupo me quedó de dos, porque el compañerito está de oyente. Allí le, le, le leen las dos que corresponden. Vaya, there we go. Teacher, atenda al snow. Ah, sí, fíjese. La voy a cerrar ahorita antes de que se me vaya. Thank you, Rosy. Y dije, antes de, antes de ir a ver la conversación, pero faltaban 10 minutos. Entonces dije, bueno. <laughs> Vaya, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, let's see. Before we go, Adriana Sofía. Adriana Sofía. Present. Eh, Ana Alicia. Ana. I'm here, teacher, pero me pierda la pantalla. <laughs> Ay, ok. Ana Grisel. Ana Grisel. David. Presente, John. Diego. Present teacher. Diego. 
Diego le ha cambiado la voz, dije yo. Vamos a ver. Edwin Mauricio. Present teacher. Okay. Elda Cristina. Present teacher. Elmer Fabricio. Present teacher. Eh, Grace. Present teacher. Ivonne Marcela. Ivonne. Present. Jennifer Elizabeth. Present. Lizette, eh, Jessica Lizette. José Alberto. Karen Janet. Present. Carla Lorena. Present teacher. Lizette Dayanara. Present teacher. Rubia. Present teacher. Rebeca Marcela. Present teacher. Rosa Hilda. Present teacher. Victor. Victor. No está Victor. Present teacher. Karen Stephanie. Present teacher. Adriana Marcela. Present teacher. José Alfredo. No está José Alfredo. Okie dokie. Bueno, pues sí. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Check, check. Anna, try to join. Tengo Anna, David. You can receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. I have, thank you. I have, I have, thank you, to see ya. Perfect. 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 I'd like, I'd like us to revise the steps to verify that we are ready to start product producing our new shampoo. Right. I'd like to know if the quality control steps should be repeated <coughs> once the product is finished. Finished. Yeah, that's a good point. Greg, Marta, would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? Of course, let, let me revise my files. Greg, could you find out the production manager is around? I need him to clarify what the revision step is about. Con quién voy? Conmigo, si quiere. Mm -hmm. ¿Usted fue Lucía? ¿verdad? Sí. Ah, voy Son tres personajes, creo que podríamos. Sí. Son tres. Ah, está bien. Hacer cada uno. Uh -huh. 
offer. Ni Lucia. I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. I am Marta. I have. Thank you. Uh, I have. Thank you, Lucia. Perfect. I like us to receive the tip for to verify that we are ready to start producing our new shampoo. Right, right. I would like to know if the query control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Yeah, that's a good point, Greg. Marta, would you mind telling telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high. Of course, let me revise my files. Uh, Greg, could you find our or in the production manager is around? I need him to clarify what the revision step is about. No le doy el sentido de pregunta cuando es pregunta. Okay, cambiamos. Mm -hmm. I will be Lucy. Okay. Uh, I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. Would you mind telling us, telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? Of course. Let me revise my files. Well, could you find out if the production manager is around? I need him to clarify what the revision step is about. I am now okay. I'm going One to more time. Um, now I it's my turn to be Lucia. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm going to be Martha. Okay. Okay. I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. I have, thank you. I have, thank you, Lucia. Perfect. I like, uh, I like us to revise the steps to verify that we are ready to start producing our new shampoo. Right. I like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Yeah, that's a good point. Greg, Marta, would you mind telling telling us if you if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? Of course, let me revise my file. Revise. Greg, could you find out if the production manager is is around? I need him to clarify what the revision step is about. So um, now are we are going to replay or answer to this question. What is the new product? Lucia, what is the new product Lucia, Marta, and Greg are discussing about? The okay, let me get my way. <laughs> shampoo. Shampoo. Is it shampoo? Yes, shampoo. It's shampoo. Where? And I know the quality control step should be repeated one of. Lucia, the perfect. I like the revise the steps to verify what are ready to start producing shampoo. our new shampoo. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Perfect. I like. What uh, are two steps the production process they mentioned in a conversation? Two steps. Number one, process. Quality control, I mean. In production. In See, I have to revise the steps. Quality control. Control. Okay. What else? But but quality control, I mean, is the second. A second. Cost? No. Uh, if the cost to run. Of Analysis some... of the production process? Production process? 
Not, not production process is in is in the process. Okay, this is the quality control step. Okay, uh, then the cost, I think it is the cost. It's other process. Production manager. I, I think it is production process and quality control because they are asking what are two steps of the product? Ah, what are two steps? Two step. Uh -huh. Of the production process that mentioned in the conversation. Ah, they are saying that. I mean, is the producing the first one and the second one um, quality control? Because yes, um, and, and the, Lucia says that the steps to verify that we are ready to start producing. Um, hmm. uh, Lucia said, I like us to revise the step to verify that we are ready to start producing our new shampoo. Where they revise the step. I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Yes, that's a good point. Marta, would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will compare with time? I don't get it. What did you say, Jennifer? But I just identify quality control. Um, I'm going to read it again. Maybe. But maybe um, the product in, yeah, in, in the, the last first, one? In the first one, Lucia said, I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. In hacer un segundo control. No. No. No, un control de calidad alto. No, no le está diciendo que lo, o sea, le está. Es que se lo está preguntando. Yes. Hi, teacher. Hi. Um, we are discussing about the question number two. Is what are this what what are two steps of the production process they mention it in the conversation? Mm -hmm. But there is talking about a quality control step that I think is the first. And then they, they, they say that the quality control should be repeated. So Lucia uh, asked for the cost of running a second quality control. I guess the first one is a quality control and the second one is a quality control uh, of the product finish it. Is it right? What are two steps of the production process they mention? Mm -hmm. I think one is quality control. A quality control. Ah, will you revise the steps? The quality control step. And a quality control repeated. <laughs> yeah, remember, one is the quality control and the other one? I don't know. The revision of the steps because they will revise, right? The revision of the steps. 
-hmm. But what steps? Just the quality control. No. She says, I'd like uh, I like us to revise the steps to verify that we are ready to start producing our new shampoo. So she will review the steps for producing the shampoo. Uh, okay. And the other one is the quality control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Those are the two things. Okay, well, let's go. Okay. I'm silent. Thirty seconds, and everybody will be back. Seconds. Thanks. Bye. Check. Um, we sell. Okay. What is the new product Lucia, Marta, and Greg are discussing about? The new shampoo. New shampoo, very good. What are the two steps of the production process they mentioned in the conversation? Quality control is step two. Do, como dos veces, doble control de calidad. Aha, but quality control is one of the steps. Which is the other step? Revision. Revision. Mm -hmm. Yes, revision. Yes, the revision. Okay, what did Greg suggest about the production process? Hmm? That, what did Greg suggest about the production process? He suggests um, the quality control step should be report once the product is finished. Uh -huh. Repeat it. Great su suggest. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, um, second, uh, quality control uh, once the product is finished. Exactly. So run a second quality control, right? Repeat it. Okay, very good. Questions? No questions? Mm, no teacher. <laughs> no teacher. We have no questions. Well, I told you today the grammar point that we have is indirect questions, right? We're talking about indirect questions. What are indirect questions? Hmm? What are indirect questions? indirect questions. Who can tell me? Hello. I think is uh, in the question when when Greg say, says, I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated is an indirect question using I would like. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. So when we are using an indirect question, I'm going to move. 
we ask a question instead of telling the person the question directly, we go around, right? And when we make a, this type of question, it's because we want to be very formal and very polite. We will see a couple of phrases that you need to use depending on how formal you want to be and on how polite you want to be. Now check, when we use indirect questions to ask questions in a more polite manner, right? An indirect question expresses the same meaning as a direct question, but it does not present question word order. And you will see the order. An indirect question behaves like a sentence, like a normal sentence. And that happens uh, because they do not use the auxiliary, right? You will see that. Check the first example. I wonder if you reviewed a copy of the analysis for the production process. Remember when we were reading the conversation, I told you the actual question, if you want to make a direct question will be, did you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process? Did you receive a copy of the analysis? But instead of saying directly, Victor, did you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process? Yes, I have. Aha, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> so instead of, of asking that way in a very direct form, I go around, right? And I say, I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. Remember yesterday we say wonder is me preguntaba, right? Me preguntaba. ¿Por qué no le pregunta directo? <laughs> when you say me preguntaba si recibió una copia del análisis. Yeah, so that's uh, trying to be more polite, right? Another Teacher, excuse me. Tell me. Excuse me. Sorry, are you sharing the screen? I no. Yeah, no. No. Ay, qué feo. Según yo. Según yo. Thank you, Anna. So, the next question is, I like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Check. I wonder. I'd like to know. Yeah, I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. If he wanted to ask a question directly, that would be, should the quality control step be repeated when the product is finished? But that would be very not polite, right? But very direct. And they don't want to be very direct. They want to go like surrendering before uh, asking the direct or the questions in a direct way. Check other examples. Marta, would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? That would be indirect. Would you mind telling me? Te importaría decirme, right? But if we go directly, we will say, will the cost to run a second quality control go very high? Mm -hmm. That's the normal way we speak, right? Unless, unless you want to be extremely polite. Now, check the other one. Greg. Could you find out if the production manager is around? In a direct way, it will be if the production manager around, right? So that's totally different. So remember the purpose here is to be very, very polite, see? 
And I want you to pay attention to this. If, if, if means C, right? And the if is the, what, the one that introduces the question when the sentence is affirmative. See, when the sentence is affirmative. We will see a couple of, uh, of exercises and later on we will come back here. But check the punctuation. When the introductory segment is a phrase, the resulting statement with the indirect question will take a period and not a question mark at the end. En otras palabras, check it. Si yo tengo una pregunta directa, pongo un question mark, pero al, al final es lo normal. Estoy haciendo una pregunta, pongo un question mark. Pero en, en el caso de las indirect question, como no es una pregunta directa, no lleva question mark al final, sino que lleva punto. Y check. I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. Punto. I like to know if the quality control step should be repeated. Punto. So I don't I don't put a question mark. I put a period. Yeah. That what happened if instead of asking cuando aquí dice the intro, introductory segment que se refiere a esto. I wonder, I'd like to know, would you mind telling us, or would you mind telling me, could you find out, can you, si, tiene, si quiere ser menos polite, puede usar can, can you tell me what time it is, would you tell me what time it is, would you mind telling me what time it is, right? So, if it is a question, like in the case of would, or could, or even can, podría ser usado el can en una forma menos polite. In that case, if we are using this one, okay, then we put a question mark at the end. But if I'm beginning with, I wonder, I like to know, right? In that case, no. Check this. Another thing is that when we are uh, making a question, the auxiliary will not exist. Ya vamos a entrar más en detalle ahí. Va, check. These are the, allá le llamaban introductory phrases, pero es más fácil de comprender si usamos opening phrases, right? You can use, can I ask you, could you tell me, do you have any idea? Do you know? Would you mind telling me? Y estos terminan en question mark. Mire. What? What do you think? Why do you think? Where do you think? Who do you think? Who do you think is the new student? Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero este sería como bastante directa. Entonces la vamos a hacer. Who do you think the new student is? Can you tell me who you think the new student is? La vamos a quitar para que no nos dé lugar a confusion later on. Okay. Vaya. So check. We have. Remember. Can I ask you? Could you tell me? Do you have any idea? Would it be possible? Mm -hmm. I was wondering, I wonder, I would be interested to know. I'd like to know, is there any chance? Those are uh, beginning phrases. We can also add there, do you know? Would you tell me, do you have any idea? Esas son frases que yo ocuparía para empezar algo. Eh, en una pregunta de forma indirecta. Okay. 
¿Me podrías, podría preguntarte, verdad? ¿Me podría decir, tienes alguna idea? ¿Tienes alguna idea de quién es el nuevo doctor? ¿Tienes una idea de quién es el, el, la nueva compañera? Yeah. Do you have any idea? Sí. Do you have any idea who the new teacher is? Sí. Entonces, uh, we are going to use these introductory phrases. It doesn't matter if we are using uh, just no questions or information questions. Now check. When talking, me voy a mover de aquí. Okay. When talking about yes no questions, we expect a yes or no answer, ¿verdad? And we use if or whether to report yes no questions. Usualmente, eh, cuando esperamos una respuesta positiva, usamos if. Y cuando esperamos una respuesta negativa, o así como, quién sabe, usamos weather. Pero da igual, cualquiera de los dos está bien. Ok, check the examples. Will you do this? She asked me if I would do that. ¿Sí? Will cambia a would. ¿Sí? Are you going to the market... I'm reporting a question here. Are you going to the market? She asked me if I was going to the market. But going back to this, remember, can I ask you, do you have any idea? Vamos a meter una página nueva acá para ir escribiendo las preguntas en forma normal. Y después vamos eh, a ir escribiendo las preguntas en forma eh, eh, indirecta, digamos. Vamos a ver, estamos acá. Vamos a usar esta diapositiva. Va a check. If we have. A ver, tenme una pregunta que sea yes, no question. ¿Se acuerdan de las preguntas, verdad? Y de cómo hacerlas. Do you eat your dinner? Ok, did you eat your dinner? Did you eat your dinner? Did you eat your dinner? Sí. Ok. Y recuerden, vamos a la más grande. Recuerden que dijimos que podemos utilizar eh, I wonder, can you tell me. En este caso, do you know, no, porque, o sea, si yo sé, a menos que esté hablando con alguien que ha perdido la memoria, le puedo preguntar, do you know if you ate to dinner? Si no, no. Pero si estamos, eh, podríamos usar, can you tell me? Sí. Can you tell me? Y acuérdense que dijimos que para introducir una pregunta que es no question, vamos a usar if. Can you tell me if you, como mi pregunta está en pasado, mire, esto me indica que estamos en pasado, ¿verdad? El auxiliar, como mi pregunta está en pasado, yo voy a poner el verbo en pasado. Can you tell me if you ate your dinner? Uh -huh. Pregunta en pasado. Cuando yo hago la pregunta en la forma indirecta, también la voy a hacer en pasado. Recuerden que les decía una pregunta. Eh, una pregunta. Una pregunta indirecta se comporta no como una pregunta normal. Se comporta como una oración. ¿Sí? Entonces, si usted se fija, esta es una oración en pasado, ¿verdad? You ate your dinner. No existe el auxiliar acá. ¿Sí? Aquí no hay auxiliar. 
Can you tell me if you ate your dinner? Podría, si se fija, aquí tenemos un question mark at the end, pero yo podría usar otra, otra frase para introducir la pregunta y puedo usar, I wonder if you ate your dinner. Punto, ahí no voy a usar coma. Y check it. Estoy usando. It is proper. Use the verb have. Sí. En este caso, si tenemos en la hora. Did en you la, have your dinner? En la pregunta tenemos have your dinner. Did you have your dinner? Did you, antes quitemos el your. Did you have dinner? Sí, porque no se va a comer la cena del, del compañero. <laughs> ¿Verdad? Ya le vamos a quitar el your. Can you tell me if you had dinner? I wonder if you had dinner. ¿Sí? Independientemente de cuál introductory phrase usted ocupe, la oración, o sea, la pregunta está indirecta, se comporta como oración, no se comporta como pregunta. ¿Verdad? Vaya, vamos a hacer otra pregunta. Mm, le pregunto. Trajiste sombría. Did you, did you bring? Use, usemos otro tense que no sea pasado. Para que vayamos viendo los diferentes tenses. Trae dinero para comer. Do you bring money? Wait. Do you bring money to eat? Bye. Esa es la forma indirecta, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de una, hora, una pregunta en present. Ahora, cuando yo hago la pregunta en forma indirecta, remember the phrases. I wonder, can I ask you, could you tell me? Vamos a usar could you tell me. Could you tell me? Could you tell me, y usamos el if, if you bring money to it. Y aquí le vamos a poner question mark, porque estoy usando una palabra, una pregunta o una introductory phrase que es para pregunta, ¿verdad? Could you tell me if you bring money to it? Si usted quiere usar una frase, por ejemplo, podría preguntar, I'd like to know, I'd like to know if you bring money to it. ¿Sí? Entonces, recuerde, su oración está en presente, perfecto. Mi verbo va a estar en presente. ¿Sí? Present, present. Past, past. Yo voy a regresar el mismo tense que estoy ocupando en la pregunta directa, porque la idea no es cambiarlo, ¿verdad? Pero sí los, eh, voy a hacer la pregunta de una forma más polite. Por ejemplo, eh, va, imagínense que usted pregunta, Can you lend me your car? You lend me your car? Ahora, en forma indirecta diríamos, I was wondering, o sea, yo me estaba preguntando, ¿verdad? If you, el quién lo vamos a pasar aquí, eh, bueno, lo vamos a dejar así. I was wondering if you could lend me your car. Porque aquí, no sé, lo vamos a mover. Si usted quiere ser más amable. Could lend me your car. I was wondering if you could lend me your car. Do you have a, a bicycle? I was wondering if you have a bicycle. 
¿sí? Entonces, la idea es siempre ser más amable a la hora de preguntar. ¿Ok? Do you speak Spanish? I was wondering if you spoke Spanish. Ok, look at this. I have uh, some other examples for you. Uh, sometimes we use the verb to be in the question, right? When we are uh, making an indirect question. So you see, if the question is with the verb to be in present, I have the verb to be is, you say, is he Spanish? Can you tell me if he is a Spanish? Mire. He is a Spanish. Can you tell me if he is a Spanish? Do you know if he is a Spanish? I wonder if he is a Spanish. Sí. No importa qué frase usted ocupa para empezar, pero la oración aquí sigue igual y se comporta como una oración, no como una pregunta. Right? Check. If you are making a question with the present continuous, you say, is the restaurant closing now? Can you tell me if the restaurant is closing now? Check. The restaurant is closing now. Es como una oración normal. No digo, can you tell me if is the restaurant closing now? No puede ir aquí, sino que va después del subject, ¿verdad? Esa sería la posición de su verbo, el verbo to be. Ahora, si yo voy a hacer una pregunta con el verbo to be en pasado, was he late for the meeting? Can you tell me if he was late for the meeting? Past continuous. Were you watching TV at three? Can you tell me if you were watching TV at three? Can you tell me if you were, you were watching TV at three? ¿Sí? Has Lucy been to Mexico? Can you tell me if Lucy has been to Mexico? For example, if I ask, uh, does Victor live in San Salvador? Can you tell me if Victor lives in San Salvador? Cuando, eh, the lapis. Cuando estamos utilizando, vamos a, a volver acá. Cuando estamos utilizando, vamos a hacer una pregunta sobre otra persona. Puedo preguntar yo. Does Victor live in San Salvador? Does Victor live in San Salvador? Puedo usar do you know? Do you know? Do you know if Victor lives tercera persona, verdad? In San Salvador. Do you know? Mire, se comporta eh, como una oración, no se comporta como una pregunta. Solamente que le voy a poner question mark porque empecé con una frase que Lleva question mark. Do you know if Victor lives in San Salvador? ¿Por qué le pongo S al verbo? ¿Qué creen? Porque estoy usando la tercera persona. Does Victor live in San Salvador? Do you know if Victor lives in San Salvador? Does Carla work in an office? Can you tell me if Carla works in an office? Yeah. Do you study French? Can you tell me if you study French? Mm -hmm. Is that, a, do you have any question here? Yes, yes, no teacher. Question. Mm -hmm. No, teacher, porque ya no fuimos. No questions. Ok, vaya, look at it. Eh, 
Does David live in London? Can you tell me if David lives in London? Can you tell me, do you know if David lives in London? I wonder if David lives in London. Okay. Did Amanda call John yesterday? Can you tell me if Amanda called John yesterday? Can you tell me if Amanda called John yesterday? Uh, did uh, Karen come to class today? Can you tell me if Karen came to class today? Recuerden, usan el mismo tense, pero le dan vuelta, ¿verdad? A la, a la oración. En la pregunta usamos el auxiliar did en la direct question. Pero la indirect question, there is no auxiliary. No auxiliary at all. Mm -hmm. Processing. Questions. No questions. Bueno, vamos a trabajar entonces. There you go. Go to the sentences. I'm going to send you to the rooms for you to go and, and work. You will go with the same group, so we do not make another one. Vamos a ver. Hmm. Okay. Try to join. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, try to join. Ah, la he perdido, pero. Number five, can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Page 28. Mm -hmm. This exactly. Hmm. Use the introductory phrases and questions to write direct yes no question. Compliance with a partner. Aquí surgen las dudas. <ríe> que si cuando ella explica todo. <ríe> Ay. Chichera, que usted lo hace ver todo bien fácil. <ríe> ya los ejercicios no nos ayudan. <ríe> A ver lo fácil. Can you tell me? Por eso son yes, no question, ¿verdad? Sí. No es indirect, yes, no question. Indirect question. Is the machinery is is the ma is the machinery capable of performing this process? This process. Is... No sé si estoy mal. Can can you tell me or not? Mm -hmm. okay. Aquí compraríamos el if. If is the machinery. If the machinery. If, ¿verdad? Sí. If. 
If the machinery if, fit. If the machinery. Pero no me acuerdo si llevaba coma o punto. Pero no, no, no. Va de corrido. Al final. <risa> pero hay una pausa de la. Ah, sí, sí. No, sí. no, ahí no. no. Eh, eh, la, la, el, 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 ahí donde hablaba sobre la puntuación es al final si lleva punto o si lleva question mark. Pero en este caso, como está este, comenzando con Ken, eh, lleva question mark. Exacto. Sí. This process, ¿verdad? This process. Okay. Le queda un nido ahí de matching y de... Es de matching. Oh. Este es otro idioma. <laughs> <laughs> O sea, que está en una serie turca en cabal en el idioma que raro hablan cierto oh. Sería, if will the manufacturer buy new machinery to produce mm -hmm. or order some time? Teacher, pero en este caso no llevaría question mark, ¿verdad? O oh, sí. En la... Ah, sí, 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 sí. No. Está contractado. No. En la dos, no. Porque empieza con I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Este okay. le va a poner un puntito ahí al final. And production control forms. Creo que el control ahí llevaría ING. Do you know if the if the schedule and production controls forms split? Is complete. Do you know if that schedule and production control forms are completed? Mm -hmm. Are complete. Okay. La cuatro is de la misma forma que la dos. I like to know if the operation I like to find I like to find out. Mm -hmm. If process of programming, I like to point out if the operation plan describes the process of parameters. Do you have? Any idea? If we go for a small batch or mass production. Yes. Will you? Hi teacher. Hi. Hi teacher. Hello. Aquí. Vamos bien, teacher. Sí. Intentando no dar bien. 
la primera estaría correcto porque ahí tengo mis dudas. Bueno, ahorita estoy un poquito confundido. Vamos a ver. Uh, can you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing these processes? Sí, ahí le ponemos question mark at the end. Ah, pa, ok. Esa era como una, esa la teníamos como la duda con, con Nubia. Si uh -huh. le poníamos al question mark symbol o no. Sí, vaya, le van a poner pregun el signo cuando empiece con can, cuando empiece con could, cuando empiece con do o con did. En ese caso sí le van a poner question mark. Okay. Cuando empiece con un subject, por ejemplo, I, I'd like to know, I would like to find out, I was wondering, I wonder, en ese caso va a punto, al final. Pero independientemente sea pues, este, negativo a la oración. No, no importa, no importa. Lo que va a mandar si ocupa question mark o punto al final es con la frase con la que empieza. Ok. ¿Mm? En este caso sería I. I. Uh -huh. eh, eh, lo que tienen aquí antes de la pleca, todo eso es su frase introductoria. I'd like to know. Eso tienen que ponerle una pregunta para que sea indirect question. Pero ah, okay. en ese caso se mantiene la misma estructura de la, de la introducción, ¿verdad? Sí, la, la frase introductora es la misma. I'd like to know. Ajá. Ese sería lo demás. Ajá. Y después, I'd if, like to know. if. If will. If is the man. If, man. Eh, pero es que Will no es nombre. If está bien. Ok. Ah, ok. ¿Cuál es su sujeto? Manufacturer. The manufacturer. The manufacturer. ¿En qué tiempo estamos hablando? Futuro. Ajá, entonces ahí sí hay que poner el will. En presente porque solo se le agrega ese al verbo, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de terceras personas. Y en pasado porque solo se pone el verbo en pasado. Pero en futuro no hay forma de poner el verbo en futuro sin el will. Entonces, ah, I'd like to know if the manufacturer will buy new machinery to produce, sí, Out of order sometime. Uh -huh. Ahí está, muy bien. En este caso no llevaría punto. signo. No, no lleva punto. Exacto. Porque comenzó con I. ¿Cuál otra que tiene que llevarse los puntos, Tichir? Perdón. Es I. Todos los que empiezan con I. Okay, I solamente like... I. Sí, todos los que empiezan con I. I like okay. to know, I like to find out, I wonder, I was wondering. Ay, okay. bueno. Ajá, todos esos van a ir así con punto. En este caso, sería. Do you know? Do you know? Luego sería el subject. That's Kate. Uh -huh. Y aquí no hay nadie. Estoy yo, teacher, pero él me dijo que estaba, que tenía problemas de conexión porque estaba lloviendo. Rebeca. Estoy, teacher. 
Pero sigue lloviendo fuerte. Y Rebeca, 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 Rebeca. Sí, le escucho. Aquí está Adriana, dice. Chalme, Rebeca. Sigue de oyente, Rebeca. Sí, teacher. Ok. Este día sí, pero mañana ya me recibiré la clase bien. Ok, perfecto. Adriana Marcela, hoy sí ya está lista para trabajar. Sí, teacher, hoy yo no le dije nada. O sea, cuando estoy de oyente sí le pongo o le escribo algo. Ah, pero como no la escuché en ningún grupo. Porque me mandó de un solo con Karen que dijo que estaba de oyente y, mm. y José Alfredo. Uh -huh. Que toda la semana ha estado de oyente, entonces yo dije, y, y no me contestó ni el present al principio. Yo dije, ah, pues no está. Es que al principio tuve problemas para entrar. ¿no? Ah, ya, ya, ya. Por eso la mandé allí porque dije, no está ahora. Y ya vio la situación que se da cuando los otros le están hablando, ¿verdad? Y, y no están. Sí, eso sí, dicho. Pero sí es que estaba ahora. Ok. Vamos a ver. O si quieren nos la sentamos y, y, y nos pasamos a la cuatro. Ah, ¿por qué? ¿Qué pasó con la tres? Nos hemos trabado. ¿Cuál es el problema? Vamos a ver. Yo, yo pensé en can you teach her? Can you tell me? No, si su frase que le están dando es do you know. Es la que tiene que ocupar. Su frase, ah, ok, entonces. Su frase introductoria es tuya. Según la que está, es la que tengo que ocupar. Entonces, se, se ocupa tal cual. Sí, la frase introductoria no la va a cambiar. Esa queda cual, cual se la dieron. Ahí sería, usted empezaría con, do you know? ¿Quién está escribiendo? Yo. Siempre utilizamos el if. Sí, hoy, hoy, todo este día, sí, porque estamos usando yes, no question. Es que, ¿cómo, se, ¿Cómo se pronuncia esta palabra? Schedule, schedule. Ahí le falta, and production control forms. If the schedule. And, uh -huh. schedule. production, production control. Forms. Ajá, exacto. You know if the pro... Vaya, acuérdense. Pero esta, esta uno está bien, porque le cambié el quién por el could. Could you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing? Sí, está bien, eso no es gran cosa. Está bien. I like to know if the manufacturer will buy new machinery to produce our orders. Muy bien. Chay. Ahí está, muy bien. Por ahí está Adriana Marcela. Sí, aquí estoy. Sí. Entonces, en esa prácticamente es como hacer que la pregunta, la respuesta suene como que más amigable, ¿verdad? Según lo que entiendo. Ay, es que es para que sea más. Y es prácticamente el agregarle el could al would con el if, ¿verdad? Sí, y dependiendo del, sí, del verbo estamos hablando. que se utiliza igual la respuesta. Uh -huh. oh, Ajá, porque okay. es, es como que usted diga, me preguntaba si me podría dar ray. Right? En vez de decir, me da ray. Right? <risa> <risa> me preguntaba si me podría dar ray. Right? Sería posible que me diera. I wonder if you could. Give me a ride, right? You give me a ride, sí. Okay. okay. Ajá, entonces, 
Y este tipo de preguntas se utiliza cuando usted no tiene mucha confianza con la persona a quien le está pidiendo el favor, ¿verdad? En ese caso lo utiliza. Uh -huh. Ah, ok. If we will, will, will. If we will, aquí si usamos el will. El, el, porque, tenemos que, eso le va a preguntar si hay que siempre usar el will. Sí, fíjese que sí, porque vaya, en el caso del presente, lo que hace es poner el verbo en presente, ¿verdad? Y si es tercera persona, agregarle la S. Si estamos hablando de pasado, poner el verbo en pasado. Pero en el caso de, del futuro, si no le pone will, se queda en present. Entonces sí hay que ponérselo. Y está bien así, we will. Do you have any idea if we will go? Aquí le falta el go. If we will go for a small batch of mass production. Entonces cambia de orden el will, ¿verdad? Sí, siempre cambia, siempre cambia. Cuando, si se fija en la del verbo to be, el verbo to be, en vez de estar al principio, que en la oración normal, se pasa allá antes del verbo, ¿verdad? Como que si fuera oración, no como que es pregunta. Y lo mismo sucede eh, con el will, que el will pasa después del sujeto en vez de antes. En la oración directa, el will está antes del sujeto. El uh -huh. verbo to be también está antes del sujeto. <coughs> en, la oración, en la pregunta indirecta, el will pasa después del sujeto, igual que el verbo to be pasa después del sujeto. Porque lo que le decía, que este tipo de oración, de preguntas, se comportan como que si fueran oraciones. ¿Verdad? Por eso es que se da esa situación. ¿Quién anda por aquí? Oh, Victor. Vaya. Can you tell me if the machine is, eh, les falta el verbo to be aquí en la 1? Cuando estamos sí. usando el verbo to be, en vez de estar al, en, en, al principio, como pregunta pasa a estar después del sujeto. Entonces decimos, can you tell me if the machinery is? If it, esa, esa, if teacher, it, esa era una, una pregunta que yo tenía, que uh -huh. por ejemplo, en la 5, ¿Sí? do you have any idea? Entonces, después de eso, nosotros vamos a conjugar el verbo go en futuro. Exactly, exactly. Ajá. Entonces, aquí cambian el orden. Pasa we antes de will. Porque acuérdense que la pregunta indirecta Ajá. no se comporta como pregunta, sino que se comporta como oración afirmativa. ¿Verdad? If we, oración afirmativa. We'll go. Uh -huh. We will go for a small batch. Uh -huh. En una oración afirmativa, usted diría, we will go for a small batch. ¿Verdad? Y en, en number six, I was wondering if... if ah, en este uh, caso, como la pregunta es en pasado, tiene que poner el verbo en pasado. El verbo en pasado, ¿verdad? Ajá, que es lo que yo uh -huh. pensaba. Uh -huh. El verbo en pasado. Estamos confundidos. Esa, esa, esa duda tenía... Pero recuerden que este tema es completamente nuevo para ustedes. O sea, es normal, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Es totalmente nuevo. Va, póngale la D allí y el verbo va a quedar en pasar. Sí. Me lo llevo porque saben que ya son las 10 y 5. Sí, teacher. Ok. <ríe> Let's go. Thank you, teacher. Ok. No. 50 seconds. ¿Qué dicen? ¿Lo checamos rapidito o mañana? Porque ya no son... Rápido. Rápido. Bueno, ustedes mandan. Doki. Vaya, vamos a ver. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Vamos, todo es. Can you tell me? Can you tell me if? Is, 
the machinery. Y aquí el cambio se da aquí. If the machinery is. ¿Verdad? If the is aquí, pasa después de machinery. Can you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing these process, processes? En la uno, teacher, se pierde el off. Is capable of? Aquí si va. se pierde. No se pierde. ¿A, ¿A dónde va? Ido en el mismo puesto. Is off. You say. Can you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing these processes? Okay. It is capable. Okay. 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 If the manufacturer will buy, will buy. El will buy ir después de manufacturer, ¿verdad? If the manufacturer will buy new machinery to produce our orders, y de ahí nada va a cambiar. Number three, do you know if, if the schedule Production control forms hasta aquí. Y después. Are complete. Yes. Do you know if the schedule and production control forms are complete? What about number four? I'd like to find out. If. Uh -huh. En este caso, como es presente, the operation plan, y le vamos a poner ese porque es tercera persona, ¿verdad? I like to know if the operation plan describes the process parameters, ¿correcto? Uh -huh. También, sí. Vaya, number five. Do you have any idea if, if we will exactly if we will go for a small batch on mass production? If we will, recuerden que se comporta como opción afirmativa, verdad? Entonces, el auxiliar de la pregunta no va a estar al principio, sino que va a ir después del subject. Eso pasa con will y pasa con el verbo to be. En el caso del auxiliar do, does o did, acuérdense que se omite el auxiliar. ¿Sí? Y aquí, si es presente y tercera persona, al verbo se le agrega la S. A ver, this one. I was wondering if el auxiliar desaparece. If you y a receive le ponemos de. I was wondering if you received the quotes of the raw material providers. Sí. Estamos bien. Yes. Yes, teacher. No teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Vaya, pues. <laughs> bueno, let's go for the last attendance quickly. Okay. Adriana Sofía. Present teacher. Ana Alicia. Present teacher. Marcel. David. Present teacher. Diego. Edwin. Present teacher. Elda Cristina. Present teacher. Bien. Grace. Present. Yvonne. Jennifer. Present. Jessica. Jose Alfredo. 
No, José Alberto. Karen. Present teacher. Mr. Dayanara. Present teacher. Nubia. Present teacher. Present teacher. Victor. Present. Karen yes. Stephanie. Teacher me. Hmm. Rebeca. Yes. Ay, me la salté, qué barbaridad. Yes. Rebeca. Present teacher. Por el corriente. Rosa Hilda. Victor. Present. Karen Stephanie. Karen. Adriana. José Alfredo. Adriana, present teacher. Adriana Marcela. Ok, Adriana, good. Present. <ríe> de sí. Tony present, teacher. Sí. Vaya, pues, si you too. Teacher, yo present también. Yo no escuché que me mencionó. Sí, la mencioné. Sí. Present, ni Mielmer no me dijo present tampoco. Sí, me apagó el micro, teacher. Ah, vaya. Pero yo sé que hay. Teacher, yo contesté, pero no sé si, si me oyó. Sí, la oí como robot. Ok. <ríe> A ver si le oí. Ok. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Nubia. Nubia, Nubia le tocaba quedarse, pero ya es bien tarde. Nos quedamos mañana. ¿Le parece? Sí. Va. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Feliz noche. See you, see you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.